Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages. Welcome back to the F4 Headquarters podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Oh, you're too kind. Really, really, really. You're too kind, everyone. Thank you for joining me, first and foremost. I am the icon, the F World icon, Sean Jazz Stevens, and I am here today to offer some world's wisdom on this happy Saturday. And of course, like the title, this is Saturday Night Live. However, it's not that Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate your <laughs> appreciate your uh, petty laugh. I appreciate that. Anywho, folks. Today's edition of the F-Roll Headquarters podcast, we're going to be doing a bunch of things here. You know, and I kind of have to apologize at the first and foremost. I had planned on doing a, um, I had really planned on doing some reviews on some television shows and some movies tonight. But I felt like there's more things important to talk about. And more things that need to be addressed other than just movies and film and television and whatnot. There's many people who need to be recognized for doing amazing work. There's many real-life dream masters and dream warriors out there in the world that should be shouted out and appreciated. So I hope all of the film people will understand, but we're going to celebrate some real-life dream masters, some of which have been, are actually people in some of these things, and the reasons why we're shouting some of these people out. So, rather than bore everyone with, you know, a lot of the other things, let us get ready to travel as we get ready for our first, um, our first shout-out, as first and foremost... We want to shout out uh, the following people for their great successes over the weekend. Um, Well, last week, as you guys know, Henry El Nero Mina represented the Menu Boys, absolutely dominated the boxing world, taking his second boxing, taking his first boxing, um, to my knowledge, his first boxing tournament win. And he has really become quite the uh, quite the well-rounded fighter, has Henry Menya. He's really evolved. Um, his brother is just as, as dangerous as he is, as far as on a mat or in a ring. These two young men are two of the most disciplined and tremendous young athletes I have ever seen. They are both respectful, responsible, and they are both very successful in what they do. Um, we have had Henry and Jairo Menya on our icons of the F World roster for a number of years now. Um, I first learned about them uh, back, of course, when the world was, when everyone else was worried about what we're going to do in life. These two young men were some of those young men who were continuously working on becoming better at their Goals and dreams and aspirations on beca- becoming better in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, defending themselves, and just better human beings all around. Um, Henry Elman, they've also been former guests on the show, by the way, and hopefully they'll be back on the show. And today's what's interesting about this episode today, and I really, you know, one of those things about me is I, I don't really give myself, um, I don't really look at a lot of things I do as something of really important or poignant or whatever. To me, it's just what I do. Um, giving words of encouragement or, you know, celebrating someone else's account. Like the fact that I do shout outs like this, where a lot of people want something in return for doing them. I don't understand that concept. That's not something I do. Uh, that's not going to be something I'm going to you know, be about. Um, I'm about successful people and I want people to succeed in their goals and dreams and aspirations. And if I see people who are doing those things, then of course I'm going to give them all the tools, the knowledge, and give them words of encouragement along their way. The Menya boys, the Adele boys, uh, Grace and the Super Duck Russell, Noah the Nightmare Tyndall, Leo the Bull Curtis, 
Ivan the Dolphin Shark, Asseni Verkovitz out of Russia. Um, just to name a few, Jaden Brooks, Jojo the Bodybuilder, Philip Ricardo Jr. I think all of these people I just mentioned over the years, some I've known longer than others, and I've always had the same amount of respect for them. And as someone who has watched some of these people literally grow into the monsters that they are, it has been a great pride for me to know the real deal versus all of the people out there who think they want to do something, who might want to be successful, who dream of maybe being successful, who might want to do something. These are people who take the bull by the horns and go out there and achieve their goals. Um, I've said before that there are some of some of these athletes are some of the most, best pure athletes on the planet. Um, Asseni Verkovitz, Noah the Nightmare Tyndall, they are over in the over there in the across the border actually. Um, actually, Verkovitz is even further than that. Verkovitz is over there in Moscow, Russia. So is Ivan the Dolphin Shark. He's also in Moscow, Russia. Now I say Moscow, Russia, and some people are like, wait, wait a minute, how can you? like these two young men who are or how can you support these two young men who are you know russian and all these things here's the deal this show here we don't deal with such things we deal with people who are successful at what they do and we support people who are fantastic human beings in general these men these young men who i mentioned are people who are fine outstanding athletes all around and when it comes to sports I've said it in time and time again, sports and politics are separate in my eyes. And we should not hold people who are athletes are responsible for political views or political agendas. Um, unfortunately, with everything going on and the tragedies in other seas and across the world, war is just an, it, it is a very ugly thing no matter who's involved. There's always casualties on either side. There's no winners or losers in war. It's just pain on top of pain on both ends. And we have a case right here where we have young athletes who were probably once friends, who were supportive of each other, who might even care about each other. You might have been even best friends, but they are ripped at the seams from each other based upon political views. That needs to stop. We need to have peace within the sports world, and we need to be able to separate politics and social justice and social people and people who are just in it to be successful what they do it's not right to exclude people who are athletes just because they come from a country that that maybe politically has other views it's not fair to the athletes because the athletes have no say especially the young athletes that's the that's the hardest part um so you know, that end of there, that's that's why I have those people over there in Russia I still support. Just like Noah the Nightmare Tyndall, Leo the Bull Curtis, Riley Simmons, who all hail from the UK. Jack and Tim come from the United Kingdom. Why should I have any kind of honor monster treaty to cost them? They live across the pond in England. So what? They're all real life dream masters doing their own thing, working hard and achieving their own goals and dreams. That's ultimately what they do. And that is why I support such people. Um, and I don't have to really justify supporting anyone in the world who is out there achieving their goals and dreams and aspirations. What I won't do is let someone else tread on other people just because of political views because especially with the young people they have nothing to do with anything like that they're it's out of their league it's out of their it's not football it's not swimming it's not mma it's nonsense is what the war is war, war is nonsense sorry to tell you um i am f4l <laughs> and a lot of people look at that as well that must mean that you don't believe in fighting that's not true either I believe in fighting for a good cause. I believe in fighting the good fight. And I believe in fighting for the things that are important. Love, caring, compassion, understanding, respect for each other's differences. That is the F4L way. And that is what I live. Every single day, 365 days a year. That is who I am. That is what I am. 
to answer those questions. The people I mentioned just a few minutes ago, I might have blurted out those names, but on this show, some of those names are very synonymous with this show, especially when you're talking about JoJo the Bodybuilder, Jaden Brooks, Philip Ricardo Jr. These are people who were on this show way back in the day. What's different about that versus everybody else in the world? Well, you know, I can't say that our show is a good luck charm. I can't, I can't, there's no actual proof behind that except for the fact, well, the Menya boys, way back early in the day, they were one of the first MMA fighters to come on this show. And we were proud to have them on here. Um, Henry is one of the most respectful young men I've ever had on the pleasure of having on the show. Um, and his brother Hiro is just as respectful as his brother. They are always willing to learn and grow and get better. And they've been on this show a couple times now. And we're working on getting them back here again because they deserve to be celebrated. And as people who really brought them on the show first and really recognize them for that, that's, you know, really cool. JoJo the bodybuilder, way back in the day, um, during the whole pandemic thing, he was a young man who was had aspirations to become a bodybuilder, a bodybuilding champion, Mr. Olympia. And he's achieved a lot of bodybuilding competitions already. He's evolved into the young man that he is always destined to be. He's going to evolve into the man that he is already become. Um, he's wise, he's smart, he's deliberate. He is very, um, you know, very, uh, you know, he knows his stuff. He's careful with his words and he might not talk, you know, as much as everyone else because he lets his actions speak louder than his words. Because in the world, let's face it, in the world, whatever comes to sports or fitness or anything like that, there's plenty of people who like to run their mouth or say that they're going to do something, or say, I'd like to do this, or I can do that. JoJo is the, I, is, the, is the example of someone who not only says, I'm going to do that, but then he goes out and achieves it, puts the work in. And a lot of people who they look at people like JoJo and Jaden and half a dozen of these other guys who are working and busting their tails in the gym, and they look at them like, oh, you're doing great, and this, that, and the other thing. But what you're failing to realize is you can do the same thing if you really wanted to. These are young men who don't only just say, I want to do that. They go out there and they know they got to put the work in to do it. That is the difference between people who achieve and those who dream. And that is the difference between a dream master and those who are just dreamers. There is a difference. It's one thing to say and have a set of goal for yourself, but it is another thing to go out and work towards your goal and then achieve the goals as time goes on. That is how you become a, quote, dream master or a dream warrior if you're male or female. And on social media and um, you know YouTube and all these places, you see so many people who kind of have and kind of strip over each other with the amount of content they put out. Um, young people who are, you know, into the fitness world, lifting weights, you know, showing disciplines, doing different programs, getting sponsored by gyms, and that's great stuff. But guess, what, how, guess how they get that done? They put the work in to getting those things done. When everyone else says, well, you know, they like to, you know, comment. Tonight, for example, tonight, um, well, I'm going to give you two examples, not to put, call anybody out per se. Two examples, real quick, tonight alone. Um, and I've seen this time and time again. Um, and it's ridiculous, by the way. Okay, so, one, here's the difference between me and a lot of other people. Someone asks someone on social media, one of the most common questions on either YouTube or on Instagram is, rate me or tell me how you think I'm doing or whatever like that. 
to me, it depends on what someone is doing, what their overall goal is to achieve versus just, you know, run the mouth uh, and being just a hater in general, right? There's a difference. There's a difference between someone who just wants to be fit just to be fit and another per- thing for someone who wants to be a bodybuilder, another thing for someone who wants to be a fitness model, another thing for someone who wants to be, you know, Mr. Olympia or a power lifter. These are three, di- these are different size physiques, by the way, you need for each. If you're a power lifter, you need to have strong upper body, but mostly strong le- lower body to be a power lifter. So if you're wanting me to rate you on there, then I'm going to have to look at you know it has to be your upper body and mostly your le- your lower body because that's ultimately how you're going to get the most legs lift up is your legs and your arm and your upper most of your legs unless it's lift. And this is also why um, power lifters have mostly all leg damage and so forth. By the way, f- future reference for people. Um, and I think one of the funniest things that I have to laugh at is a lot of people, <clears throat> when someone comments on something, I legitimately want the best for them. I support people who put their work in to getting their goals and dreams done. Um, Jaden, JoJo, the Menya Boys, the Adele Boys. I mean, I, I know that I you know, mentioned them in a glance. What a great example of what hard work and dedication means in such a vast concept when it comes to athletes. I think the Adele boys are probably one of the best examples of a pure, well-rounded athlete. Um, actually, all of, our, all of these people I mentioned are great athletes, but the Adele boys, it's one thing to be good at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, to be good at combat sports, but... To be good at combat sports, baseball, football, lacrosse, motocross, you name it, baseball, these are all different sports, and these young men excel in every single one of those sports. That is what makes you a what I we call an alpha athlete. That's what we called them in high school, an alpha athlete. I was a tri-sporter. A tri-sporter is someone who plays at least three sports for the school. That's a tri-sporter. And we've already gone over my sports before. I played soccer. I was on the wrestling squad, and I was on the swim team. That was my three sports because those were my three seasons, right? Fall was my soccer or football for the world audience, which is what I consider, by the way. And then wrestling in the winter, and then the spring was... Uh, swimming. That was my three sports. But then, I mean, there was a year that I tried both American football and soccer. That was a bad idea just because I had to commit to one more than the other. And I had a hard time, you know, being there for both of my teams at the same time because I'm a team player when I'm there for my team. I think team sports are fantastic for youth. And I always recommend someone who's having a hard time with their young person or their kids, if they're having a hard time with direction or having a hard time with, you know, or if they're having a hard time with, um, you know, making friends or whatever the case may be, or having problems with either, you know, whatever the case may be, whether it be social or whatever, put them on a sports team. Make sure it's a sport that they enjoy. Not even a sport, but if they're a sports athlete, you know they're a sports athlete. But if they're a dancer, then put them in dance. If they're a gymnast, put them in gymnast. Is, actually, I take that back. All of these things are athletic. And I think one of the problems is a lot of people look at, say, gymnastics or dance or sports as three different things that evolve in three that are just kind of different, right? They are different. But a lot of people look at those different things and they say, well, one's definitely harder than the other. One's more athletic than the other. And then my question with you is, how do you know whatever sport you're choosing to put up there in that pedestal is harder than the other? Um, Those people who have often made fun of people who do ballet. Um, I've heard it many times. Oh, you do ballet and they give kids who do ballet or dance a hard time. Well, guess what? 
Ball- ballet is a very dedicated and very disciplinal uh, sport in general. Yes, right. I called it a sport. Why is it a sport? If it is something that is physical that you can get harm from and you can get injuries from on a regular basis, then it is a sport, especially if it's something using physical force or body or movement and so forth. Dancing is that. And I'm sorry, but cheerleading is as well. I'm sorry to burst the bubble football team, but the the cheerleaders are just as athletic as you guys are. Yeah, they're not wearing hockey. They're not wearing football pads. and They're not running up and down a field with the ball. But what they do takes a lot of skill, a lot of timing. And if one person does one thing to mess up, someone's getting hurt. Much like you, you guys on the football team. Um, you know, you guys are wearing pads and helmets and everything else. The cheerleaders don't wear any of that, and they get hurt on a regular basis. Trust me, I have friends who are, who are cheerleaders, and I respect for anyone who is any kind of an athlete. And, I mean, the ongoing debate over American football versus soccer has been ridiculous. It's been going on for years. I've talked about on this show the biggest difference in how I view it. And you can say, well, you played soccer, so you don't know what American football is, and you would be wrong. Because I did play both. And I know the differences, and I know which one I was better at than the other, and I also know which one I liked more than the other. The American football just had way too many pads involved. Even though there's a lot of force, and you tackle people like that, you forget that soccer, they do the same kinds of things, only there is very little padding. And... Somehow that is seen as less of a sport or less intense or less physical than your sport that requires so many safety precautions. There's a problem there, folks. <laughs> if you have to wear a helmet to run up and down a field, that is already putting you at a disadvantage to people who aren't wearing a helmet at all on a field every single time they play. So next time you guys look at a soccer player... Try looking at that also with football, hockey, and things of those nature. you got to remember there's lines, right? There's a defense line, offense line. Guess what's on the soccer team? You go out on the soccer field and you might have a reserve, one person. It's nonstop running for two hours, three hours if you're a really good team. Um, and most football players could not win. And I know this because we actually challenged the football team challenged us to a game. We had to play one of their games. They had to play one of ours. And by the end of it, the football team was gasping for air and run, jump, uh, grabbing water and could barely hang up with the soccer players, which was nonstop running. And I'm not hating on football players. Again, I respect every athlete for what they do. It takes discipline, dedication, hard work. Football isn't sport, but so is soccer. So is football, American, uh, European football. So, it, I mean, I often call American football basically watered down rugby because that's ultimately what it mostly resembles. Um, if you ever watch rugby, that's kind of what American football would mostly resemble. Except in rugby, there's no, there's no, pad, not a lot of pads either. There's just as many pads in that as in there is in soccer. So there's that. That's why American. That's why European. What's why soccer or football is the universal game, because it is um, one of the most hardest and dedicated ones out there. That shows who is the poor athletes. I'm just saying. It's a hard sport, more than a lot of other ones. But American football has its also, there are things just like hockey, just like baseball, lacrosse. All of these sports are important. Swimming, diving, you know, the ongoing joke. Okay, who has it harder on the swim team, the divers or the swimmers? The answer is neither. They're both are just as hard as each other. The diver has to worry about going from high distances and getting on points. The swimmer has to be really fast in the water and be a good swimmer on various different ways to swim. Most people don't even know what the name of what they do is when they go swimming. 
Next time you go swimming, do you know what the name of the stroke you use is? Do you even know what a stroke is? <laughs> and I was on the swim team, so I know there's differences. I know that one of my favorites was the freestyle, but I was also good with the backstroke. And I even really well did well with the dolphin stroke, which I was really cool with. The butterfly I'm also good with, by the way. And so there's that. But the bottom line here is, no matter what the sport is, anyone should be respected for what they do and the work that they put in. I am blessed to have seen so many pure athletes on a regular basis, not only you know grow into the amazing athletes they are, but become better people and better athletes and just you know continue to amaze and i watch from the back um and i don't take a lot of that and i don't you know you know i think they do amazing work that's why i respect these people you know i don't know why because i had that same mindset and there, you know, there's a new breed of people who are who are coming on to the scene now, right? Um, it would be ignorant to not realize that there is a new form of people starting to come in. This is not something new, because remember, especially when it comes to YouTube, and we, I have to go back to YouTube as an example. I was one of the very first YouTubers way back in the day. And I discovered YouTube by accident. The only way I discovered YouTube is because why? That's right. I was in a wrestling company at the time. And the wrestling company decided to put my early promos on YouTube. And my question, people, was, what is YouTube? (laughs) And, of course, they would become the biggest segments for that company. The company, unfortunately, is no longer in existence. I'm talking about pro wrestling, by the way. Not um, Greco and Roman wrestling, which we'll get into in a little bit, with some more things going to talk about. But you know the amount of um, you know content that came out from a lot of the jazz fitness promos, the early ones, were all on YouTube, and that is why a lot of the early YouTubers, me and Jordan Jensen, Troy Savan. Uh, those are like your early YouTube singers, right? Look how that has evolved, the musical world. When I jumped on YouTube, when I first came to YouTube, it was me doing the wrestling stuff, um, doing the wrestling promos for the company. There was a few others, very few and few out between people doing that. And then for singers, you had the Jordan Jensen's, Troy Savans, Justin Bieber, and you had a lot of those people who were on there who... You know, some of them went on to do big things. Other ones, unfortunately, because of fans and just the insane amount of pressure that this puts on people, they have burned out. And I know that on this show, I have given Justin Bieber a hard time. And that is because out of a lot of people, they look up to Justin Bieber. And unfortunately, Justin Bieber forgot where he came from. And unfortunately, the other sad part is... Justin Bieber is someone who people should look at as a cautionary tale. And I'm not saying that now uh, to be mean to Justin Bieber or to the bel- to the be- believers out there in the world. I'm not trying to say this to make them upset. The sad part is I feel bad because, you know, I feel like when he got his break and they said, okay, let's bring this kid from YouTube up to the mainstream. And, the, and he wasn't ready for that. And then when they made him there and they took him out of the little, you know, town in Canada and they brought him all over the world. We see what happens with a YouTuber, a regular Joe from YouTube who went on to do that. And a lot of people idolize this kid. They respect him for what he did. He got famous on YouTube, but what you don't realize is the amount of pressure and the toll that it put on Justin Bieber himself. It's one thing to respect someone for what they've achieved, but what you really need to do is step back and look at the whole picture. Look at what that cost Justin Bieber. 
And I have to go, you know, I have to be serious for a moment and not, you know, do the kayfabe thing. Early days of, j- of jazz fitness, when I was, you know, the playing jazz, when I was jazz fitness, the wrestler, and I was the bad guy wrestler, which was what jazz fitness was, and I was cutting promos and talking about, you know, and I even called out Justin Bieber during the early days, and that was when Justin Bieber was at his prime, because that's why I cut the promo. Again, I was a heel, got a hit with the, when the coal is hot. What I said then is exactly sadly what happens with society, with people, culture, and everything else. But looking back and all seriousness aside, you have to feel bad for Justin Bieber. And I know on my, I know on my show, and I know that in the past, I know you're probably shocked to even me hear me give Bieber praise coming from me. <clears throat> but having to step back... And look at the whole picture. You have to understand that Justin Bieber, like so many other people on those early days, was someone who, someone said, he's got something. Pull him off here and let's bring him up here to the main roster. Let's him sell out these stadiums around the world. And he just wasn't ready for that, folks. And what you have to understand is the toll that that put on him. Mentally, physically, emotionally. Did he handle everything fantastically? Probably not. But... I want people to put themselves in his shoes. Everyone wants to put themselves in his shoes until you're there. (laughs) I often have wondered, you know, what if I was to, you know, invite Justin Bieber on my podcast? Someone who in the past on the wrestling, in the wrestling world, I've called out, uh, First, you know, part of the segment, but then when he was, you know, putting out fake challenges to people for YouTube or UFC fights, I was one of the first people to say, I'll fight him because he wanted to fight people that I knew he wouldn't fight. And then, you know, the Logan Pauls and the Jake Pauls in the world decided to get in the fighting world after that, whatever. But you have to understand that as many people want to be successful on YouTube, There's a toll for that. There's a lot of people who have been, quote, successful on YouTube. And then you look at them, do you want to be that successful on YouTube? Um, Ask Rebecca Black if she wants to be famous from YouTube. Rebecca Black was huge on YouTube. She came up with a song. Um, And all honesty is people want to hate on it all they want. That song has the most plays of pretty much any other song on YouTube. You can hate on it all you want, but everyone has heard it, and it is gets it's still one of the most highest listened to songs. For someone who hates it so much, people sure do love to listen to something they hate. Just saying. But you know, a long time people look at people and they are quick to hate on them for their success. And from me, from my perspective of things, I look at people like Justin Bieber, and my thing isn't because, you know, at first it was for the wrestling shows in general, and it was because I was supposed to hate on Justin Bieber because I was a bad guy wrestler. He was supposedly a, you know, popular singer. If you want to get cheap heat, you pick on whoever is the popular person that one likes, obviously. That's, the, that's heel number one, 101 right there. You know, Cheap Heat would be, you can't get, that's right up there with, you know, this stinking town here with all these fat inner city sweat hog kind of a deals. That's a good way to get Cheap Heat in wrestling. But the what people have to understand is your comments and how you treat people. This is, a, I'm addressing the audience right now, not the YouTubers. Or the influencers, I guess you're calling them now. Back in the early days of YouTube, you weren't an influencer yet. There was no such thing. You were just a YouTuber. You were a person who sat in your house and made a YouTube video. <clears throat> now me, I had a production crew that made the early jazz fitness things. And then once I learned how, then I became, I started doing jazz fitness videos. And then my son and I started Jazz and Sons Dream Masters matches. And then that evolved into Jazz and Sons Dream Masters. 
and now it's icons of the F4L. See how that's evolved? <coughs> we are the originals in that genre, so people know. So we're not going to pretend to fake that now. As we've been on for a long time. We don't mind that other people want to do the same thing. We welcome it. Because I don't want to crush someone else's spirit and goals, whatever else. Now, what sets ours is different, you have to understand, is I've also been in the actual professional wrestling world. I've also achieved things in the professional wrestling world outside of that. I also have, not only do I have, you know, success in the wrestling world, but I've also have two college degrees, two very separate college degrees. I have a degree in both human services and a degree in film production. And both I have used over the years. In fact, one of them I'm using again. <laughs> Which, uh, teaser, spoiler, uh, coming up Saturday. Hope you guys are right. Not Saturday. Soon after Saturday, folks, we're going to have some big news, news coming up this week. So make sure you tune into the show this week coming. All of this week coming. Because there's going to be some announcements coming. Regarding that project, Behe TV to screen will be coming soon. And you'll be hearing more news about that very, very soon. And how you can help and everything else. So be, where, be ready for that. But <clears throat> going back to this whole thing about what is an influencer, what is a Follower, what is a, you know, what is a, um, and then the creeps of the world, um, or the haters, the trolls. We all have encountered these as well. Um, and, and what's interesting is, you know, social media has evolved over the years, just much like you know anything else has, right? You know, MySpace, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. I'm sure this, you know, half a dozen others you guys could probably rattle off. You're probably yelling at my screen right, you're yelling at your radio right now at me telling me what it is. But listen, for me, I have tried the various different things. I don't have time for a lot of them because I'm too busy doing actual things. I'm too busy, you know, doing, I mean, for, let me just put the icons of the F4L, for example, for what my son and I do, for example. The YouTube wrestling show that everyone probably thinks, oh, well, that does, can't take that much work. Well, you think so, huh? First, I, gotta re I have to reach out to people. and keep, First, I have to actually reach out to the people who, in which uh, we want to feature on the show to let them know, hey, we'd like to have you on our show. And then I have to coordinate with them to build said superstar using the video game model, the created wrestler mode. And get that model looking as close to the real person as possible. And also the other part to know is I have to put the, together them, the move sets, the entrance, the entrance video, their attires. I do all of that. We are the originals of it. We don't mind doing it. Again, since we started, other people have done the same thing. And it's a great community. Um, back then, it wasn't a community. It was what me and my son thought was going to be great. Actually, no, my son said it was going to be great. I didn't know when it was going to be anything at all. I said, no one's going to watch a, a father and a son watching a wrestling show and calling action on this fake, on this, uh, dr quote, dream match. Which, again, the very first one was Homer Simpson versus Peter Griffin. And that's how it started. And then it evolved from there. King Kong versus Godzilla. Freddy versus Jason. Leatherface versus Michael Myers. We've done them all, folks. And then the women, the Dream Warriors came into place. And then we put, you know, the Black, the Black Mamba, Uma Thurman versus uh, Black Widow. Uh, and, you know, things like that. Wonder Woman versus Z Xena, Warrior Princess. Captain Marvel versus Dark Phoenix. Wonder Woman versus Dark Phoenix. Batman versus The Punisher. Batman versus Iron Man. Superman versus Captain America, and the list goes on and on. Quite famously, Wes Craven had heard about what we did 
um, my son and I was doing, and he heard about a lot of those things, the late, great Wes Craven. He and Robert England, also a great guy, um, had heard about it, and they, they're the ones who actually named our, what our male roster should be, Dream Masters, because they... The, the males are thinking, uh, you know, we're the dream masters. We kind of, the guys who are, you know, people who are the guys who are putting together their goals, dreams, or whatever, and they're fighting each other, who with the, the dream masters. And then they gave us the idea for the dream warriors, for the women. I said, well, what you call our, our women, though? The women are warriors, they're, fu- they're fight, they're, you know, the women like to be just as, are just as tough as the guys are. What can we call the women? that wouldn't be too far off and that also would only have maybe two letters. And that's when they suggested Dream Warriors. So if people ever want to know where the origin of our superstars come from, Wes Craven and Robert England (laughs) gave us the idea for uh, Dream Masters for the males and Dream Warriors for the females. So kudos to them. Shout out to late, great Wes Craven for that. And then it would evolve from there, of course. And then every time we would run into somebody, we'd say, hey, how would, how would you like us to build you? And we'll see how you work against whoever. And then what would happen is people like Ed Boone would shout out and say, hey, let's, what do you think of this guy? And then, you know, fi- speaking of which, this year, Fire and Ice are going into the Hall of Fame this year. The Jazz and Sons Hall of Fame, the, <laughs> which, you know, might be a little funny to some, but we have a sense of pride with it we feel like once you're at the level to be in the hall of fame you don't have to prove yourself anymore you've already become an icon you have done your purpose for the show and we want to honor those people who helped our show get to where it is that's why we honor them um so this year you know fire and ice are going in the hall of fame as well as one of the most original characters and is an original character, and that being the unpredictable Brock Brown. And for the faction is his social outcasts. I ran into Lloyd Kaufman a couple months ago. Actually, back in March, I ran into Lloyd Kaufman at... Was it March? Oh, I can't even remember now. I think it was March. Uh, Lloyd Kaufman... No, it was actually... Oh, I can't remember now. They're all few and far between. Anyway, um, we would tell, I think it was, actually, you know what? It wasn't Lloyd. Lloyd wasn't able to make it. I stopped by the guys at Troma when I was working for Monster Mania back in March, and I told them to let Lloyd know that Toxie, being part of the social outcast, is actually in the, is now officially a member of the Dream Master, of the Jazz and Sons, um, F- icons of the F4L Hall of Fame uh, as a wrestler Toxie is as one of the members of the Social Outcast so is Little Sweet from the Dr. Pepper commercials as so is the Noid I think in the history of things we are the only ones who are going to put the Noid or Little Sweet in any kind of a Hall of Fame because they did their purpose they helped us where we are and there we are Fire and Ice, very deserving tag team and those people who remember wondered, what is your show about and how do you guys pick the winners? We don't. Um, you know, what I would love to do is just from now on never have to write. We have no control over the outcomes of any of our matches because we never do. Um, if you ever watched our show sometime, I'll even prove it when I set the matches up. I'll record it in such a way you can see I physically have no way to you know fix or manipulate anything we do not play the game uh, when it comes to the show the show is strictly whatever happens happens may the best man win and we call the action that's how it happens that's always how our formula works that's always how it's going to be you can't have a decisive dream match in a, in a clear winner without that feature you can't play the game and then call it a dream match and then be good about the con about the outcome because you you impacted that so remember that so that was kind of how that all started though again going back to the early days of youtube if you think that you know that was something that 
you know, always got good praise, well, you'd be wrong too. Um, it's all, you know, people I've, you know, since I've started the new model, the icons of the F4, I'll bring in these real people. I, I love the, uh, you know, the feeling of seeing people who I know in real life are achieving and doing amazing things. And then on the show, our show, they're doing the same thing and matching. It's amazing how that works. And a lot of people, if you Google these people's names or you go to YouTube and you put their names in, it's going to be our shows that pop up for the most part. I mean, let's not pretend here. If you ever put some of these people, if you put their names in, if we're not one of the things that pop up, I'd be shocked. Uh, you know, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud of being able to introduce the world to these real life dream matches, masters and dream warriors. Um, you know, people often ask me, like, how do I know who would be good for a, the show? How would I know who, um, would be worthy or how do I, you know, how do I go about it? Well, again, the process is quite tedious, but I don't mind doing that. If I see someone who I believe to be a, quote, real-life dream master, I will reach out. And I will send them a message, which is usually awkward in general. Uh, because that means you actually have to have some sort of interaction with someone. So then what happens is I get to email them or, or direct message them. Usually it's on Instagram, for the record, folks. And I message them, and then sometimes they get back to me, sometimes they don't. The ones who don't get back to me, I don't build. <laughs> the ones who do get back to me, and they say, okay, let's talk more about it, and I explain it to them. At first, I don't think they know what exactly I'm talking about until they actually see it. I think that... I'm trying to remember who it was on our show... Because a lot of the people we've had on this very show, we have featured on icons of the F4L, including the very first guest of the show. And that, of course, being the real Michael Fishman. Michael Fishman, actor, director, model, awesome dad, humanitarian, and one of the a great F4L, actually, Michael Fishman. Um... He is one of the. He was the very first guest on this all new F World headquarters, and then we've opened it up over the years to everyone else. But we've had people on the show that I've asked them. So, when I asked you if you want to be part of this roster, what did you first think? And after actually seeing yourself in action, now what do you think? And at first they were like, "Well, first I thought you were joking until I actually saw it," and then it was like, "Oh, I get it." What's also fun is, no matter how many times they try to explain, we don't control the outcomes. Once they realize we don't control the outcomes and that it is legitimately on the person who wins, sometimes they get more into it than others. It's a good feeling to hear from both the people. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you this. I do have a sense of, I feel a great sense of pride, and I feel like when they share their accomplishments on our show that to me makes me feel better knowing that they know that i respect them enough to feature them on our show and not only that that they've actually seen it and appreciate it themselves so much so that they're willing to show show the world that they are also just as deep just as tough and just as successful in the video game world than they are in real life on our roster, we have had people both in the you know sports world, entertainment world, and you name it, we've had it. And I enjoy that because the world needs more people like this to inspire others. What makes me the most proud is when I get emails like I've been that I get, and you know, a couple of years ago, when you guys think that you know haters and stuff like that. Right? But this isn't even a hater thing. This is more of me. Um, I put stock into a lot of people. 
I put a lot of, um, you know, hope, aspirations into people. I pour my soul into doing the commentary for these to these matches because ultimately, what you don't maybe you don't understand is while these people are on our show, I'm also telling people about these amazing people, and no matter what it is that they do plugging them for whatever it is that they do and bringing awareness to some people who may not even know they exist. That to me is good because I'm doing good for the world. I'm introducing the world to more of these people who should be paid attention to. But there was a while back, I almost was like, you know what? This is pointless. Um, you know, I would say to people, I said, you know, and, and this is, you know, this is kind of one of those things where the vanity things, I guess, at first. And then I had to get over myself, of course. A uh, couple things. One, you know, here's the reality of it. The algorithms do not match what the followers are on the YouTube show. And the reason I know this is because of the huge difference I have between what is actually seen and the emails I get from people who have seen our show. And they range from all kinds of things, these emails. I do not share these emails with everybody. In fact, um, a lot of people, when we, when we talk about Jazz and Sons dream matches, right? Everyone has to have a role. My son and I, you know, co-found the show, co-run the show. And he still has a lot of say in our show. I still run things by him. He still has guidelines on me. I'm not allowed to build anybody out till 1 a.m. <laughs> and things of that nature. But as a whole, in the early days, considering my son was 11 when we started the show, the original thing was I would, ch I would make sure the emails were taken care of. He would check the algorithms. And then, you know, we'd, you know, do all those things. Because of his age, I didn't want him seeing comments or getting questions or whatever else like that if people would decide to be creeps. Because there are a lot of creeps in the world, folks. Spoiler alert. And a lot of haters who like to talk about things. And there's a lot of spam, too, out there. See, YouTube's one of those things. It's a very strange place sometimes. In the sense where sometimes people will put ridiculous things on your thing or whatever, which shouldn't be there or whatever. Um things you don't approve of or someone will put a spam comment in. But for the most part, our fans are awesome. Um, because when I almost pulled the plug a few years ago, because I felt like the people on our show didn't seem to care about being on our show. <laughs> um, and then it was the fans who started sending in emails when I said out and announced that I'm probably going to pull this plug on this. I did a live, explained why. And then I got an outpouring of emails of people who are watching our show and what it means to each of them. The, the most heart-wrenching one was from a kid from Canada. Well, actually, it was from his mother from Canada. And, his kid, and this kid was battling cancer at the time. And he was talking about how some of the stars on our show, actually specifically JoJo the Bodybuilder, um... And people like him who have inspired him to battle cancer. Give him the strength to overcome something bigger than him. And Jojo at the time was one of the younger people on our roster. And he, he also, by the way, spoiler, Jojo the bodybuilder is also a Grand Slam champion on our show. Because <laughs> he's held every title we've had. And wrestling, that's a big honor. Uh, Jojo did it accidentally, and I don't even think Jojo watches wrestling, nor does he care about wrestling. But the fact that Jojo had the mindset to know that this was going to be something good for him and good exposure, I am grateful that Jojo decided to let me build him and that he enjoys it. And over the years, I've come to know him and his family, and they're fantastic human beings. Jojo has been on YouTube himself and doing his own thing, not in video game form. But he himself has been showing people that he can achieve and how that hard work goes in. He is someone who has not only said, I'm going to be a bodybuilder, I'm going to achieve. He's gone up there and done it and been successful at it. So if you want to you know, start looking at, well, who's the real deal and who's the ones who are not, well, ask yourself this. 
if you are you still posing in front of the mirror or are you on a stage you know what is again this goes back to what is our goal here what are we trying to achieve jojo wanted to be a bodybuilder a bodybuilder goes on stage and shows off what their body and shows off their hard work their dedication on stage in front of everyone to see and 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 very modestly i gotta say so you know in in you have to have that sense of modesty i should say or lack of in order to be successful there i understand that being someone from the pro wrestling world and from the fitness world from the sports world a very close friend a, a friend of mine way back in the day not mentioning any names john cena before he became a wrestler his one of his first ambitions was to be a bodybuilder and then a wrestler <laughs> So he started training, left to become a bodybuilder, came back to wrestling because the bodybuilding thing didn't work out. But one of the biggest, enjoy, one of the funniest stories he ever told us in the locker room was, you know, how he got over his sense of modesty. Because you can't be modest and be a bodybuilder, unfortunately. Anyone who's doing all of these posing knows that you can't really show everything off if you're just, you know, posing with your sweatshirt on and everything else. But to be a bodybuilder, you show less than that. Because you got to show why you're better than all these other dudes on the stage. Because you're all dressed the same. Well, my fr- <laughs> my buddy from my neck of the woods, John Cena, he didn't... Uh, he had a little bit of confidence that end. Because he basically um, had, you know, obviously in a Speedo in bodybuilding... And not everyone's cut out for that. Not everyone's ready for that. Now, in, in sw- I was on the swim team, remember, folks. So I'm used to wearing Speedos. I've also been on the wrestling team. And a singlet isn't anything really to write home about either. And I was in a gi before that, you know, growing up. A gi is not, you know, necessarily the most flamboyant. Not the most. I mean, it's more clothing than, you know, say... Um, I don't know. Um, I think now I think they have nogi um, tournaments now too. But I mean, now it could be anything. Now look at the UFC, basically. Um, but in general, you know, there's not a lot of you know a tie. You have to have a less modesty in order to be successful in these things. You can't care about how you look to other people. You have to basically be comfortable in your own skin. Is the moral of that story? But he would tell us stories about um, how he, at first, when he was going to train out there, he was a beast in the gym. I got to tell you that, folks. He is very strong. Don't think it's a fake. It's it's not. He did like to work out. And it is true. He was a gym rat. So was I. <laughs> and the difference was, is, you know, he wanted to be a bodybuilder. I liked pro wrestling. Um, I still wanted to be a pro wrestler, and he wanted to do bodybuilding. He went to do bodybuilding, and it, it, he did, you know, attempt, and he, you know, found out that wrestling might have been better. Now he's a huge movie star, but that's beside the point. But the point was the story he used to tell us is how when he told, you know, to help him with his confidence, his coach, who was getting ready for bodybuilding, would have him go to the island in front of the gym. Now, for those people who don't know what island is, a roundabout in the middle of the roadway on a busy, busy street in the busiest time of the day, and he would have John go out in his Speedo and work out his whole routine in his Speedo on that island to help him with his confidence. And that is how he got over that. And now, I mean, John Cena doesn't care about ripping off his shirt and jumping around the audience or whatever else now. And now he's very comical about it. But he had to work his way up there. But what people fail to see, and John Cena is another person in wrestling world. People look at him and like, oh, John Cena. John Cena is also successful at what he did. So let's not pretend there. People who like to hate on The Rock. You can hate on The Rock all you want. You know, he's a third generation. His dad got him a job. But The Rock also got achi- has achieved on his own. Um, he's excelled on his own. He's probably he's another one of those examples of someone who may be more successful than the rest of his family. 
Um, he he definitely has a strong lineage and a very strong bloodline, no pun intended. But in the layman's term, The Rock built his own name. Dwayne Johnson built Dwayne Johnson, and he worked himself up. Just John Cena built John Cena, and so forth and so on. These are people who people like to hate for that. Dave Batista, another one. <laughs> but anyway, these are all people who, you know, they had ambitions. So it's not like I don't know people who are from the bodybuilding world. Another former guest on the show, Phil Picardo Jr., it is the natural bodybuilding champion multiple times. He is a legend in the natural bodybuilding world. He has his own bodybuilding competition. He knows a lot about fitness. He knows a lot about bodybuilding. So it's not like we, I, we, I don't know talent out there. We've had Philip on the show. Where he has a very no, a great knowledge of forcing. What was amazing to learn is how close the camaraderie is between bodybuilding and pro wrestling. A lot of people who like to not like pro wrestling because it's, quote, fake, which I just grinded my teeth saying that, because it's not, it's fake until you hit the mat, folks. I'm just going to add that there. But anyway, um... But bodybuilding is a pure sign of your discipline, your hard work, your dedication, hopefully. Especially in the natural bodybuilding thing, because that's all about you, yourself, your work, your ethic, or whatever. And there isn't anything to do with illegal substances or injecting yourself with things to get there. Bodybuilders, I think recently you've seen the effects on bodybuilders who do use these things. It's kind of sad. If you think about it. <clears throat> but you know what? I get that. Because in the wrestling world, we have the same thing. Unfortunately. Different reasons. Same demons, unfortunately. <clears throat> anyway. Um, you know, I talk about a lot of these young future athletes. And these people who are making a difference in the world. And... You know, I'm proud of everyone who has accomplished everything they have. And I'm very happy that they are all still, after all these years, I mean, JoJo is still crushing it in the gym. Jaden Brooks, I've talked about his name a few times on the show. He is always someone who evolves. He is a wise young man. If you want to talk about someone who has a head on his shoulders... Jaden Brooks is probably one is one of the top four people, I would say, as far as the, quote, influencers go, uh, or the people out there. I hate that term, by the way. I don't know why that term doesn't sound good to me. How about just people who are successful instead of influencers? I feel like that's a negative stereotype, a negative impact on the person who you're talking about. They're an influencer. Or how about they're just a person who's on t- who does successful things, who likes to see- help other people succeed? I don't know. I don't know. What is, I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, Jaden Brooks is probably one of the top four people, at least, who I believe to be one of the smartest people in that whole community. He's not just about the fitness. He's not. You see, the difference between a JoJo the bodybuilder and a Jaden Brooks Jojo is clear about what his goal is. He wants to be a bodybuilder. And he is a bodybuilder. Jaden is not trying to be a bodybuilder. Jaden wants to be fit and also wants to be successful and make a difference in the world. That's a difference. And it doesn't mean that Jaden doesn't like fitness or to stay in shape. You see, that's why Jojo and Jaden would probably really... You know, I want to say people like Jojo and Jaden, I'm amazed that they don't work together on something. Yeah, they have different goals, but in the in the end of the day, they're two of the most disciplined, hardworking and dedicated young men on the planet, in the US anyway. And I'm just thinking of all of these other people out there in the world. If you were to take Jaden's business sense and Jojo's work ethic, and everything else. I mean, they're both powerhouses and all the way around. I think that would be a great match right there. And I'm not talking about it on our show. I'm talking about it in real life. Um, 
There's a lot of those people like that, though. These these, these new people, though, the new breed, so to speak, who are coming up in the fitness world, in the sports world. Um, Now, on our show, on Icons of the F World, we featured people from all walks of, you know, pretty much everything, sports and, um, you know, entertainment, of course, and... Our open MMA tournament's coming up in June, uh, which is, you know, of the half of May. And I got to tell you, I've reached out to some people. And I have to say this, if you're ever listening to this, whoever is listening to this, I, how many of the actual people who I am shouting out listen to me shouting them out? I don't know. But I say it anyway because the rest of you guys are listening. And I want you guys to know the respect I have for these people is because I know they're going to make it because they are going to make it. They have work ethic. They have drive. They have determination. They have support systems. They have themselves. And when it comes to that, we got to talk about the people whom which they surround themselves with. Or the people whom are following and supporting them. How many of them are actual supporters? And how many of them are just haters? <laughs> what do I mean by this? Well, come on. Do I really have to explain what a hater is in this day and age? A troll of the world? Listen, trolls have been on internet since internet's been in existence. YouTube was really the birth of trolls, uh, and it just comes from everywhere. Trolls are people, <clears throat> let's, let's put it in layman's terms. <laughs> no, let's put them in my terms. Trolls are people who have nothing to really ac- speak for what they achieve, because they don't really achieve anything except for running their mouth. They get jollies out of getting a reaction from people who are actually succeeding. Usually they will, you know, kick a quick jab at someone who's doing something successful. Uh, Maybe they're a fitness person, maybe they're a sports person or a singer, and they'll talk some smack to them. They'll insult them or they'll say some nasty comments to get a a reaction. Because to them, that's the biggest thrill of their day is getting a reaction from someone who's actually successful. Someone who actually gets something done, rather than just what they do, sit around and dream about how they can annoy someone. That's pathetic, first of all. Just want to say that. If that's not the most pathetic picture I've ever painted, I don't know what is. But it is a real picture. Uh, I think the ongoing joke, or the cartoon, the meme, would be you know some bald dude in his mom's basement... Um, with, you know, a two-liter bottle of Mountain Dew in one hand and, I don't know, a bag of chips, you know, porta potty so he doesn't have to leave his computer game or his computer so he can have his precious little words of wisdom, which are lack that of. <laughs> but here's the bad thing for them. Because there's people like me out there who will call them out on their nonsense and who has no problem holding a trolls to task. It's kind of like what you do with a heckler at a wrestling show or a heckler in real life. You own them and you br- expose them for who they are and then they go back under the bridge where they belong, hopefully. If not, they're just going to do a lot of rah-rah. That's about it. Because... In wrestling, we also call this a keyboard warrior. Someone who's tough behind a computer who will do nothing after that. Um, They won't, you know, there's no real um, worry right there. It's just people running their mouth. That's usually what it is. But let me take you to this scenario and talk to you about some positive people and some positive things. Some hope out there in the world. There's some newer, you know, the new breeds, so to speak, and whatnot. And with the Open MMA tournament I have coming up, um, I reached out to some new breed of the MMA world who, just because, I just want to make this blanket statement to everyone, just because 
I haven't reached out to you yet, don't think I'm not paying attention to the hard work you're putting in. And don't think it's in vain. And please don't be disres- don't feel disrespected if I am just responding to you now or just inviting you now. This is only our second open M- MMA tournament that we've ever done. Last year was our first because the fans voted on this tournament. And this tournament, it's an open tournament. It's MMA rules. It's all in the cage. We have the arena already built, by the way. It's kind of epic. I gotta say, um, all under our MMA rules, which means this two, first person to two points will advance. The only way is to get the points is by knockout or submission only. The final match of the whole tournament will be decided under Iron Man rules, which means whoever gets the most knockouts, submissions in a course of a, a, a lot of time will become the icon of MMA for 2023. That's a huge deal for some MMA fighters out there in the world who want to prove that they're, well, icons of the MMA. We already have many fighters on our roster already. I mentioned some of them already. Both Menya boys, all three of the Adele boys, possibly the fourth, may be returning soon too. And then you got the you got the Leo the Bull Curtis, you got Noah the Nightmare Tyndall, you got Grayson the Super Duck Russell, you got Easton McDonald. These are newer roster. Well, Noah was there last year for the record, and Noah's been back on our roster since December. And actually, he's pretty. He's actually our current Dream Masters BA MMA Grand Prix champion. But the Menu Boys are currently the Dream Masters BA MMA Grand Prix Tag Team Champions. And they took them from the Odell boys in the most iconic tag team matches I've ever seen. Um, in our, you know, we have some of the toughest fighters on the planet, regardless how old they are. The women are just as tough, by the way. We are having a women's one as well. Um, Angela Russell, who is the Super Ducks mom, she is a beast in the ring. Uh, and good luck to her, anyone who is going to compete with her. I think her and Lauren Levere, Levere sorry, Laura Laverne, <laughs> I get my names mixed up again. Lauren Lavera from, um, from, you guys might remember from Ter- uh, Terrifier 2. She and I think Angela are going to put on a clinic, but there's going to be an open women's thing as well. Of course, we can't reel out the undefeated Miss Lana King. Miss Lana King's been on our roster for, I think, four years now. She is the only person on the roster, male or female, to be undefeated. That's insane and unheard of. And it's not like she's not on the show, folks. She is on the show plenty. She defends the title. She is the current Dream Warriors um, box office champion, I think, or we call the Telenet Championship now. She is undefeated. No one's taken the title from her. That's uh, impressive. But goes to show you the women are tough too. But anywho, going back to all of these other people, but we, you know, hopefully we're going to have some new faces to this tournament this year. I have reached out to people um, who are tremendous. I got to tell you, I've watched these people from afar. Uh, just to name a few. I'm not going to name everybody, but because, especially since none of them have, you know, officially, you know, said, yes, I want in, but some of those people include, um, one second, I shall tell you who, (laughs) some of those people include, uh, Connor Stelmer, who is an absolute beast in the U.S., um, as well as Jake the Snake LeBlanc. Um, he's going to be tremendous if we can get him in here. William McDonnell, McConnell, rather. Um, but, um, Cruz Hooper. Elijah, Fur- uh, Elijah F- Furton. We should have him. Um, so those people there I've mentioned, I've reached out to. Again, the people I'm look, I reached out to, uh, Connor Stelmer, uh, 
Jake the Snake LeBanc, LeBlanc rather. William McConnell, who will be new also, maybe. Um, Cruz Hooper, Elijah Furton, and there's another one too. Uh, of course, you know the Adele boys. Well, Jacob, Jacob, Jake the Snake LeBlanc is going to be amazing if we can get him in there. Actually, I think he trains with the Adele boys, or not too far from the Adele boys. And I got to tell you, <laughs> uh, that would be interesting to see that. But still, those are the people I've reached out to. Uh, so they all know who they are. I've reached out to them. And um, we'll wait to see if any of them join. If they don't, we already have plenty. Isenio Verkovitz, Leo Lebel Curtis, the Adele boys, the Heminia boys, Grayson, the Super Duck Russell, Easton McDonald uh, will be there, will be involved. Um, Isenio Verkovitz has said that. So basically anyone who has boxing. Oh, also, uh, not only will Jaden take place take part again since he is a boxer his younger brother who just joined the roster lincoln brooks will be making his first tournament um, appearance uh, since joining the roster as well as this will be philip ricardo jr's first singles tournament since joining the roster uh, for people who might be surprised to learn that philip ricardo jr knows has competed in martial arts and actually Due to the fact that he was in the military, also has some a martial art background, so he will be taking part in his very first singles tournament. But guess who else is? His tag team partner, JoJo the Bodybuilder, because he's done some martial arts as well. Imagine that. And if you guys don't think that they have a chance of going at each other, or if you don't think they're going to compete against each other, or if you don't think that they're not going to put all of their work into, you know, becoming or winning. Well, they're going to work hard. I guarantee it. And let me tell you, if you don't think that, if you think that, you know, brothers won't take on brothers to be successful, it's a tournament. Sometimes you, in order to advance, you have to take on whoever has advanced before you. And on our show, we never... We're going to do a live drawing on who's going to face who and what round. But I can tell you this right now. Um, last year, when it came down to it, Ty the Devil Odell, who ended up winning the tournament, by the way, out of everyone, had to defeat his own brother, Mason the Hammer Odell, in order to advance. And boy, did he. And then he ended up winning from the whole thing. Anthony, the Hunter Odell, almost had to face his own younger brother, but he did not. He came down to the final four, along with um, Jairo, the Pitbull Menya, Henry, the Pitbull, Henry El Nino Menya, who they, they were the final four as well. Goes to show you, they were beasts. This year, we have new faces, and we're going to have some more icons there thrown in. Um, there's a list of people who will not be there because they've either been in the Hall of Fame. You will not see Bruce Lee in there. Bruce Lee has already is there in our Hall of Fame. Granted, on our show we do have a quote that heroes are remembered, but legends never die. However, in this tournament, in order to qualify, you must be a living, breathing fighter. Still, currently to this day. Unfortunately, late great Bruce Lee is no longer with us. Nor is his son, the great Brandon Lee. So that is a new rule employed by applied by us. So you have to be a living fighter in order to advance or become involved. Um, however, if the actor portraying the fighter is alive, then that will be okay. For example... Rocky Balboa would qualify because the best Sloan is still fighting and still a fine. Same thing goes for Jean-Claude Van Damme, Steven Seagal, Chuck Norris, who's not quite in the Hall of Fame just yet, believe it or not, folks. Maybe this year. 
these are people who you may see in this tournament. And imagine if you would. The names I mentioned just now, facing someone like a Jaden Brooks or a Mason the Hammer Adele or Anthony Adele. Imagine what that does for a person to see them in any form to face someone like Chuck Norris on this platform. I think it's amazing and it'll be interesting. And that could very well happen. We don't know who's going to face who. It's, again, random. But that's the icons of the F4L. But I've also got to talk to you about a little bit of a thing here. When I talk about people who are influencers or influencers, and one of the reasons why I bring this up is because I've seen this. Actually, it's way overdone, actually. How many people actually go on these lives, right, to supposedly support people. I see this on, now, granted, I have not been on TikTok in a very long time. i got to be honest with you guys. I'm not on TikTok any longer. Uh, Probably never going back to TikTok because I don't understand it. And my friends from TikTok know that anyway, and and it's okay because I... Support them outside of TikTok. I mean, TikTok, rather. TikTok. I'm okay. However, let's talk about, um, you know, when it comes to trolls, trolls and haters and constructive criticism. Someone had the audacity tonight to say, that haters are how people can get better. That's the most ignorant statement I've ever heard. Haters are haters in the story. There is a difference between giving someone constructive criticism, which the person messed that word up, probably shouldn't use big words if you don't know what the words mean, and... I think they said instructional criticism is what they said, which is not what this is. So I go on this live tonight, which I don't go on lives a lot for the record. Um, And these two young men are working hard on their goals. and They're huge names right now in the fitness world. In my opinion, they are absolutely rising stars in the fitness world. And by the way, I did tell them both I am going to shout them out. And that's what I'm about to do right now. At uh, 122 minutes into my episode. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, <laughs> so people are, you know, we're talking about people health. So let me just tell you about these two young men who are working hard. So Jax Athletics, you guys probably know him from Instagram, maybe you know from Instagram, maybe you've seen him on YouTube, but Jax is someone who is a, you know, fitness, he's a guy, young man who's huge on to fitness, he likes to get healthy, he's working hard, I don't exactly know what the goal is, I, I think he's being public, he's actually being sponsored now by Jim Shark, which is a big deal for him, which good for him. Um, Jim Shark, I mean, I guess is another one of these, you know, fitness gym type things. So whatever, if that makes him happy, then good for him. But Jax is probably one of the most dedicated young men, also one of the most laid back people and has a demeanor that is not like a lot of these other people who are so, you know, um, it's a word I'm looking for. He's the kind of person you would want in the gym because he's like, you know, bro. And he's actually reminds me more of my wrestling buddies and my gym guys than a lot of, the, a lot of these other people. Um, I spend a lot of my time in the gym. And, you know, Jax, I've said before, I've said, I've shut him up before. You guys are familiar with Jax. I've talked about him a little bit in the past. And tonight I do, I, you know, popped on. I saw that he was live and. I said, oh, let's see him, see what he's up to and congratulate him on his success. And I did. And he was working with Wyatt, uh, who was another fitness model and who was another person who was another young man who was hard work, similar age, similar goals. Again, 
When you surround yourself with successful people, you yourself will become successful. There's an old saying, I know, quote, Wednesday was a couple days ago, but if you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Um, in all honesty, what that means is if you surround yourself with people who are negative, uh, people who don't have any ambition, people who drag you down, Sadly, you're not going to achieve much at all. However, if you are someone who surrounds yourself with people who are just as successful, just as goal-oriented, just as you know, witted as you are, you will achieve more success. I do recommend always keeping your circle smaller. Uh, I've said that a few times. I don't believe you should trust everyone that you meet anywhere. I do believe it does take some time to get to know someone. Um, even me, admittedly. I always keep things legit and on the on the books. I keep everything professional because that's what I do. People do like to come at me, by the way. If you're wondering, well, people clearly must really appreciate all the nice things you say about them. And they must appreciate your kind words and your wisdom. They might sometimes. Um, I don't think everyone else necessarily does. Some of the people on their thing like to use projection. And then once I use this word and explain what it means, they learn real quick why not to go for the words of uh, battle of wisdom or words with me. Um you know, whatever, people who question my intent on why I support or why I help someone, why I give words of wisdom. But, you know, I support a lot of people because they they are absolutely people who are role models for positive people. If that is a role of an influencer to be someone to be a successful leader and not a follower, then absolutely that should be what you should do. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there is many people out there who will, um, you know, we're going to, let's break it down. So let me tell you about this live I jump, joined in. So here's these two young men. They're working out. They're using these dice that I actually use as well. Uh, basically what these dice are, you can usually get them at like five below or Walmart where they have certain exercises on it. And when you roll the dice, Whatever it lands on, you got to do that. Whatever it lands on face up, you got to do that exercise. It's actually great for cardio and for you know toning and things of that nature. Um, and oh, by the way, to answer the question that Jax um, asked, one, one clarification: what a military jumping, what a military style jumping jack is. Um, it's. <laughs> Because actually, I do military style jumping jacks when I'm getting in shape. So, if people have ever wondered, not a jazzy jack, that's the gimmick and that's jazz fitness. But me, myself, when I'm working out, I do um, military style jumping jacks. The way you do a military style jumping jacks is similar form, but when you count, you count in, in thousands. So, in other words, it would be one, two, three, one, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, three. So you're actually doing a little bit more than your actual thing, if you want to call it like that. So let's say if you do 20 jumping jacks, right? So instead of going one, two, three, four, no. Where the military style goes one, two, three, one, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, three, one, through three, four, you know, and so forth and so forth. You get it. And... That's how you do a military style jumping jack. I usually do about 50 of those when I'm warming up. And then maybe another 100 towards the end because that's just what I do. Um, they're actually really helpful in stretching. And I also suggest, I don't know if I've ever actually seen anybody who goes to the gym stretch before they work out. But for anyone who's going to a gym, just as a PSA, please stretch before you work out. Just trust me on this. Your body will achieve, will appreciate it when you get to be my age. <laughs> trust me on that. And I did stretch. So there's that. 
But uh, Wyatt and Jax were busy working out using these these um, dice, and I guess they also said when they could have water because uh, you didn't drink water. I guess if they didn't tell you. But by the way, I gotta say, if you're working out, always good idea to stay hydrated in general. Um, and when you're drinking water, always don't gulp it and don't drink too fast because you'll get a cramp if you're working hard enough and you'll get sick afterwards. <laughs> So sip your water, don't chug it, because you'll get like with the go the body will go into like almost like a shock. Um, so I don't recommend doing that. So if you are drinking and working heavy and you're drinking water and you're doing this type of thing, be careful when you do drink. If you're drinking so much that you're gulping it, you could get really sick. So be careful with that, anyone out there. So yeah, so they were doing that, and then there's these people in their little live who are you basically making fun of these two kids, talking about their form. Oh, I don't even know if they're on their knees. And, you know, downplaying these kids who are working hard on their goals and whatever else. And I'm not going to sit back and watch that happen. That's not who I am. So, of course, I hold, held those people account and I kept on, you know, encouraging Jax and, um, his, and Wyatt to keep doing what they're doing. They're doing great. Don't let these people bother you. And these haters need to go. The trolls can go back under the bridge. And that's when one of these supposed followers, supposed, you know, supporters, they said, well, they need hate to be successful, to grow. No, you don't need hate to grow. What an ignorant statement to make. You need hate to grow. You need encouragement and you need some iron will and positive influence to grow. And to be successful. What a dumb thing to say. And I don't usually say dumb. But that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard from anyone. You need hate in order to achieve and to get better. Listen, here's what I can tell you about hate. And this is honest truth. And this is something, this is a message to Jax and Wyatt. Anybody else, any of these other people out there who are going through something similar with these people... Who like to say these kinds of things like you're too small, you're too fat, you're too skinny, you're not going fast enough, da 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 you're too skinny, you're too fat, you're not as big as me, you know, blah blah blah. These are people who probably cannot do what you do. These are people who are haters. Plain and simple, they're haters. If they're not willing to tell you anything differently from a constructive way. Now, constructive criticism would be, let's say you're doing a curl with your weights and you're doing it, maybe, maybe you're holding it wrong and where someone who lifts weights can say, hey, listen, be careful how you grip the bar that way. You don't want to break your wrist. Or, you know, if you go too far up, you're, going to, you're not getting the full rep. Make sure you go up and down. That would be constructive criticism. But to sit there and tell two people that you know, they're only going on their knees and they're making jokes out of it, they made these two kids look like jokes as they're sitting there ragging on them for going out there and working their work tails off to become the beasts that they already are and that they're going to be even bigger. So to Wyatt and Jax, who have a lot more better patience than I do, I would I actually did. I held them accounted for. And I made sure that that wasn't going to go on with with me there. And I've done that many times, that people in these lives have been kind of mean or inappropriate with the young people. These kids are old enough to be on YouTube. Um, They're not even kids. They're young men. They're adolescents who are growing into the goals that they are. So let's respect everyone for what they're doing. If you're a real supporter... Support them. Don't sh- sit there and make them look like a joke in these lives. When they're on these lives, they don't want to sit there and answer the same questions over and over again. How many times have you seen how tall are you? How fat are you? What do you weigh? How old are you? These are irrelevant questions that could be easily summed up by looking on their profile page if you're really that interested. And leave it at that. And to anyone out there who's getting these questions a lot, tell them to check out your page first before you sit there and, you know, wonder how big, how tall, whatever else. Because that 
That's just the most ignorant statement ever. That's just people trying to make little jokes at your expense. Because if they ask you how old you are, one, they're basically saying, well, you're too young to know what you're doing or whatever else. Or, you know, they're downplaying what you're doing <coughs> is what they're doing when they ask you how old you are. <coughs> they might ask you, well, you're too young to be on here. That's ultimately what they're asking you, why you're, how old you are. If they're asking you for, <laughs> yes, I did hear this question. If they're asking you to remove something or do something in a certain way, don't do any of that if you're not going to do that. Uh, just continue doing what you're doing. I, I was dumbfounded in the same live, some maroon decided it was appropriate to tell two 14-year-olds who were working out to remove their clothes, which is the stupidest thing I could ever hear. As a parent, my blood was boiling. Um, as a, so, someone who wants people to succeed, I was dumbfounded. How can people go on to a platform and just say these kinds of things to people? <laughs> So then when people ask questions, how do I look or things like that, and then you break those things down and you give that, then people want to come at you like you're some type of thing. No, no, no. See, that doesn't work with me because I'll turn that on you. Don't make, don't sit there and try to poke this bear because I will own any troll. I will make you go back under that bridge and regret you ever poked your head out from underneath it because I don't deal with trolls. I will treat you like every other heckler I've ever had to deal with. But guess what? I've only had two hecklers at a wrestling show and they regretted that. They felt like they were two cents. One person ended up leaving the wrestling show because they were they felt like they were two cents tall. That's how good I am with my mouth. Do you know why else? Cuz I can back it up. And I have backed it up. I think one of the biggest things from people's perspective, is they'll look at pictures of me. Which, how dare you, you troll, right? That's what they do. So if I say something and they don't like it, they're going to look at my page. Oh, let's see what this guy looks like. And then they're like, oh, he's fat. He doesn't know what he's doing. You're a clown because if you actually spent your time to look and look into anything that I've done, then you would see that I have very much accomplished a lot in my lifetime. And unfortunately, I'm a lot older than I probably appear in act at times. Um, However, my body does not forget everything that I put it through. Don't think I don't. Um, I still can go to a gym and lift weights. I still go for walks every single day. I still work out every day. I still practice martial arts every day. So just because I don't film those things, because who wants to see that, first of all? I had one young man one time, I was talking to him about martial arts, and he was putting out his fights out there to everyone to see. All of his, you know, kickbox, he calls Muay Thai. They had all kinds of pads on, so I was confused because I've never seen so many pads in Muay Thai. I did Muay Thai, there were no pads involved when I was doing it. Um, but this young man was decorated from head to toe in pads doing Muay Thai. But regardless of that, respectfully, you know, I said, you know, he, I, I don't remember how the conversation started, but I congratulated him on his latest victory. And then we got talking about, you know, he, how, you know, I think it came to his entrance. I said, well, the entrance is very important because you need to send the message to your opponent. It's one, a way to play mind games with them to let them know that what's coming. The crowd to know what to expect. And ultimately to pump yourself up to get yourself ready to back whatever the song is that you know speaks to you. And that was ultimately what I mentioned. And then he wanted to know, you know, where are my fights? And can I see some of these fights you've done? The reality of it is, you've got to remember, I competed in martial arts before it was cool to do ch- martial arts. I did martial arts from age four all the way to age 18. And yes, uh, when when I was about 14 or so, they started bringing, you know, our school started bringing in a camera to record our our sessions and stuff and our tournaments. Because ultimately, that's how we did it back in the day. We didn't have social media. 
um, to post all of our accomplishments. But you know what else? We wouldn't have done it anyway. You want to know why? In the 80s and the 90s, you didn't tell the other kids in school you did martial arts. You didn't tell them you took karate or kickboxing or any of these things. Because the other kids in school would, be, would target you. That's the very honest truth. You would think that would be the opposite, right? If they know that you can fight, they wouldn't want to fight you. No, 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 no. See, if the other kids think you can fight, they want you to prove it. And now you have to prove it every single day. Your entire school. Now you go to the principal's office. Now you get expelled. Because you got to make an example out of someone. Because if you don't, that's it. You're done. <laughs> Socially, you're a coward. Or you're not tough. Or you're a wimp. And that's how the other kids see you. It doesn't mean if it's true or not. The other kids view you as that. So ultimately, in the 80s and the 90s, you didn't tell the kids that you did karate. Or Muay Thai. Or any of those things. One, they wouldn't know what that was. But if you said baseball or basketball or hockey, oh yeah, oh yeah, I know what that is. But if you were to say you do karate, they would laugh at you. Like if, as if you were to say, I do ballet, if you were male. Um, but you know what? My way I look at it is, you know, if you are being physical, and I said at the beginning of this episode, if you're disciplined enough and you're putting the work in, it doesn't matter if you're doing ballet, dance, martial arts, football, baseball, swimming, whatever it is. If you're putting in that kind of commitment to something physical that you're doing, you're an athlete. Sorry to break your hearts, people. They're an athlete just as much as anyone else is a ballet. Someone who does ballet is just as athletic as someone who does swimming or anyone who does swim or anyone who does football, basketball, or anything else. They're the same athlete. Because the same time and commitment goes into both. In all honesty, some of it can be even harder than what we do. Don't knock it until you do it. That's what the football team found out when they played the soccer team. That's a true story. I'll tell you that maybe on Thursday for Throwback Thursday. But anyway, the moral of the story is um, you know, these newer people out there, the ja- the Jacks, yeah, Jacks and Wyatts, um, there's also a few others also, David Collier, um, who is someone who's up and coming. I'm not exactly sure what the goal is for him either. I did try to find out, but he's crushing it, whatever it is that he's doing. Again, discipline, and he gets the same comments. He's skinny, he's small, he's got a bulk. You know what, David Collier, don't listen to these maggots. And yes, I called them all maggots, every single one of them. They're not there to help you out, they're just here to make fun of you. That's not a supporter, that's someone who just wants to make a joke at your expense. Sorry to tell you that. Um, David Collier, yeah, I can do this. David Collier who is, you know, he obviously appreciates the things. I do give him feedback, real feedback. He does want you to rate him, which, um, again, if you ask me to rate you, I'm going to be honest. Don't, you know, he obviously gets that as well, which is good. Um, And um, I'm trying to see who else here. Um... Oh, Ellie Schaefer is another one. Um, he is another beast coming up here, Ellie Schaefer. He's a young man who's also killing it in the gym. And he is doing great work. Um, Eli. Yeah, Eli. I didn't know, I know his name, Eli. Eli Schaefer, who is another young man who is, you know, crushing it in the gym. Um, and, you know, he obviously appreciates his, you know, the kind, the you know, support I give him. But you look on their page and these people are like, oh, you're, you know, this, that, you need this, the, the live tonight, oh, I need gear, or I need to be on steroids. That's an ignorant statement because these kids don't need all that to get successful. Um, I got friends of mine who do bodybuilding who don't use any of those things and are just as successful, for the record. Um, I got a friend named Philip Ricardo Jr. who's won natural bodybuilding championships 
if you want to go to want to have questions about if you need it to succeed because you don't. Jojo the bodybuilder is someone also you can look at to knows that you don't need all that to be successful because he's done it as well. So proof is in the pudding, folks. You put the work in, you do the commitment, you're going to succeed. That's the bottom line. These people who are supposedly supporters, they're just people. Some are very supportive. They want the best for you. They'll give you kind words, encouragement. But listen to the difference between, you know, someone who, you know, is the difference between good job, a clap, and then, you know, what someone actually says. I'm going to take music, for example, for, for a second. Two examples of people who, in music, who I think are very talented people. Walker Campbell, who is one of my... I, I, I love working with Walker Campbell. Walker Campbell, as you know, has been on this show a couple times. He's on our YouTube wrestling show as well. Um, he and his mother are two of my favorite people to interact with. And very soon, we'll be interacting even more soon. Uh, as we are kind of all working together on something, but that's going to be, we'll know more about that later, maybe. Stick around on that. But Walker Campbell is someone who, uh, you know, if I was to say, you know, Walker, I love this, and this is something maybe you want to look at, he appreciates that feedback. He understands it's there to help him out. His mom gets that as well. I did that for someone else who, you know, another musician, and their representative <laughs> proceeded to think that I was being negative because I wrote a very wordy response, which was, oh, just make sure you're enjoying what you want to do. Post what you want when you want. Thinking maybe that I was implying that someone was forcing him to do so, which I was not. And then they decided to... Um, you know, bring up that this person only interacts with actual people in the entertainment world um, or wants, he works with people who are actually in the entertainment world. Rather, you know, in other words, if I give him to, if I give him advice, she doesn't want to hear, they want to hear it from me because according to them, I'm not in the entertainment world. Well, <laughs> news flash, I, I've been in the entertainment world for a little while, actually. Um, I was one again. I take you back to the early days of YouTube, and I was one of the early YouTubers. I am very close friends with a with the early people who are the original singers from YouTube. I'm not talking about Justin Bieber, but one of the very first people who I really bonded with is, was Jordan Jensen and Troy Savan, who are Troy Savan actually is still performing here and there, and. I give Troy a lot of credit, and I'm proud of him. He, you know, he started out doing the Vogue thing. One of the first people to really take advantage of YouTube to do that. He he's done acting. He's done obviously. He's crushing it in music. Troy is one of the most underrated people out there when it comes to entertainment. Troy is an amazing young man, and Jordan Jensen is another amazing young man. He is F4L. He appreciates being F4L, um, and you know. He is just, um, you know, I can say a lot, but, you know, Jordan Jensen was, you know, someone who appreciated a lot of that, um, the words of encouragement of the F4L, and he embraced that, and unfortunately, he's the exact opposite of a lot of the other people. He did get a lot of the, he got, you know, his fans became, I want a new song, and then all of the haters started, and now he doesn't post anymore you don't see jordan jensen anymore on youtube and in order to prevent that from happening for this young man i said just make sure you know you post what you want when you want it's about quality not quantity on youtube that's the way i look at it a lot of people think they need to post and post and post don't post if you don't think it's going to be good post it when you feel it's something to post at least that's how i look at it because i'm one of the early guys I only post something on YouTube when it's relevant. Now, granted, our wrestling show has been dominating my wrestling uh, YouTube show. Um, I do have another channel that is about, um, you know, advice and things like that that I haven't done a lot with. But I hope to soon. And 
that I, I, you know, I wonder how that will help others, but that is something that's coming out soon. That's of course the, uh, from the desk of the icon is the name of that YouTube channel. But, um, you know, in general, I have been in the entertainment world, sad to tell you. And also not only that, uh, when it comes to music, for example, um, I have also written lyrics to songs and so forth. And one of my favorite things recently, what, well, back then, again, it's water under the bridge. I'm not upset. I'm not angry. It's okay. Um, I still support this person because I still believe in him. I still believe in what he does. And, I, you know, I think he's great. I don't go out of my way anymore to go into detail anymore because I don't appreciate interacting with his people because I find it to be disrespectful and ungrateful. <laughs> Not him, but if I'm being honest, and I'm always a honest, I don't reach out to those people anymore. I don't go out of my way to offer feedback to a great extent because it's not appreciated and I know it's not and in, fu- in fact the last time like I said you know being told that they listen to people who are in the entertainment world as if I'm not well <laughs> they went ahead since he you had an amazing team and this person is doing big things in music isn't it interesting that I heard my a song that I had wrote the lyrics for for my cousin? He did a cover of. Yep. Uh, fun fact: I do write music. I do write lyrics to music, and you know I don't boast about it because technically the way I look at it, I just wrote the lyrics. I didn't write the song. I just wrote lyrics to the song. That, that's nothing. Um, but. This person used that song that I wrote for my cousin as a cover. He did a great job, and I'm sure my cousin liked it. But, um, you know, to be told that I don't, I'm not knowledgeable, or to be treated that way, yet they did a cover of something that I wrote (laughs) the lyrics to, I thought that was, I thought that was great. Um, But that's why I don't go out of my way anymore. For that particular person. In all honesty. If you want to know the truth. If it wasn't for the how Instagram works. I would probably cut half of people on my raw on Instagram. Um, the b- reason being is I'm not fake. I'm not phony. Um, I treat people like people. I, I try to give words of encouragement. Words of wisdom. People seem to enjoy it. But yet no one... And again, I don't care about who follows and who doesn't. I kick off a lot of people who follow me. I remove probably about 50 people a day who are creeps, weirdos, strange people, people who I believe are fake. Um, And it doesn't take me long to figure that out, people. I'm not stupid. I don't put up with negativity or stupidity or people who are just fake. (laughs) I don't do that. And I'm very protective of the people who are achieving goals and dreams, like the people I mentioned tonight. I can tell you this, and I can promise you this, on both ends. To all those people out there I just mentioned on the positive sides of things, the Jaden Brooks, the JoJo the Bodybuilders, um, Vicini Verkovitz, Lucas Royalty, who I didn't get to say a lot about, but Lucas Royalty is another poor young man who... I don't know what Instagram's issue is, but Lucas is a fantastic young man who has a heart of gold, who understands about how to help others. Riley Simmons out of the UK. Um, I said Jaden Brooks. Kip Brooks, his brother, his dad is, an, is another great guy. Um, wonderful human being. Michael Fishman, the the amazing actor extraordinaire who is an amazing human being, Walker Campbells, Richard Bourne, the author extraordinaire. Very soon, Richard and I are going to be taking the world by storm. Um, and again, we'll be silencing the doubters as I have a history of doing it. I love every minute of it. Um, and, you know, all of the other people I mentioned, 
even newer people like Jax and Trey, um, as well as you know Chris Seffer is another one, and Eli, just know that I got your backs. I'm not going to let people crap on what you guys do. David Collier, I'm not going to let people mouth off and treat you guys bad because you guys are achieving your goals. But I want you guys to know that Things that like Jojo and Jaden and all these other guys do know is when I say something, it's to help you or to guide you or to, you know, in some way help you get to your goal because I want you to succeed. I achieved a lot of what I wanted to do in life and not everything, but everything I said I was going to do for the most part I've done. And a lot of it was going against what everyone else said I was going to do. Um, I was always small, short, skinny growing up. Um, I've told that story before. Um, And I'm a better person now because of it. Because of my iron will and my ability to silence the critics. And I did that every time. And I've I've made a legacy of myself for doing such. The biggest thing of all is being surrounded by negative people on a regular basis. And they said, no, you can't control that. You have to have that. I said, no, I don't. And I started the F4L. My own lifestyle, folks. The only way I live with love, caring, compassion, understanding, and respect for each other's differences. I... Joined with other people like myself at the age of 16 when we formed this. That's right. I was 16 years old when me and the founders of the F4L came together, put up together. What is a family? A family are people who show love, caring, compassion, understanding, and respect for each other's differences. That is a family. Your family, you go to whenever you need anything. If you have a hard time, you go to your family. If you ever need a a shoulder to cry on, you're having a hard time, you go to your family. If you need someone to speak up to you or tell you you're doing something wrong, but in a constructive way because you know they care about you, in a constructive way, that is what's being F4L. That's being a brother or a sister of the F4L looking out for each other and helping others achieve, respecting each other's differences. I have one person who likes rap, one person who likes rock, one person who likes pop. Everyone gets along because everyone respects each other for what they like. One person likes to wear black, the other person likes to wear pink. They respect each other. One person lives in the U.S., one person lives in the United Kingdom, one person lives in Russia, one person lives in Italy, one person lives in South America, one person lives in Canada. They all respect each other. That is the F4L. And when everyone, someone said, this would never catch on, no one's ever going to believe this, no one cares, this is hokey, too goody, thanks to social media and learning and teaching others the ways of the F4L and telling people this is how you should be or suggesting it, just living by example, People around the world live the F4L way, and we have F4L brothers around the world. Last year, I started recognizing F4L members, new F4L brothers I have embraced into the F4L. So much so that they actually have certificates, almost like a birth certificate, if you would, that make them F4L, that acknowledge them for living the F4L way. With love, care, and compassion, understand and respect for each other's differences. For being brother-like or sister-like. These people got actual documents that acknowledge them for being such. I could tell you who they are. But I would much rather them tell you what it's like to be F4L. Some of them you probably already know. This year, we're going to do it again. But also, I got to thinking, as far as the icons of the F4L go, what if I was to go on a road trip and actually go and personally thank the people in the F4L 
or the people who are icons of the FRL and actually encourage them in person and thank them in person for what they do. Treat them for lunch. Treat them for dinner. Have a workout session with them. (laughs) Don't think it's going to go easy on you. Uh, Don't challenge me to certain games, and we don't have to worry about, you know, how competitive I will be. But I respect everyone who is F4L, and I respect everyone. And if I say I'm coming to your town, or I'd like to come to you, I'm going to come to town, would you go to a lunch? That is the ultimate respect signal. That is the most sign of the thing, because I won't just go out to anyone all honesty but i respect a lot of the f4l i i respect everyone who has put a lot of work into getting their goals and dreams done in fact at the conclusion of this show i have a commitment that i'm going to follow up with a good friend of mine um an f4l brother who i'm going to respond with to help him grow and help him achieve his goal even more so Because I believe in him like I believe in everybody else. But remember, folks, you remember to believe in yourself more than anything else. Succeed and make your doubters silent. That is the moral of the story. I believe in you, but you have to believe in you. All right? I respect everyone. And to all my new F4L members, and to all those people I shouted out tonight, I respect you guys. Great job. Again, to Henry Menya, congratulations to him on a very successful boxing tournament. Uh, he's you know crushing it. Again, he and Hyro are probably going to be headlining the UFC someday. And you know, two of the f- most finest young men you'll ever meet. Um, and to everyone else, we're going to have more news coming for you. And we're going to have more people coming on this show again. And get this, did you realize that Coming up this year, it's been three years since I've been on the air. Well, I'm going to start having all of those former guests on the show to come back and give us updates. So I'm reaching out to those people, and those people know who they are. So if you don't hear from me, you should reach out to me. (laughs) Um, And then I am going to add some new people to the show to acknowledge them as well. So... To the Jacksons and Wyatts and Elis and all those people who have not been on the show yet, you have an open invitation here because you'll always be treated with respect and dignity that you deserve because that is who I am. That is what the F4L is. And to all of our friends around the world, no matter where you are, live the F4L way with love, care, and compassion, understand, respect for each other's differences. There's too much hate in the world. We don't need it. I don't care what the excuse is. There's too much of this fake false narratives. So many of these fake prophets that make themselves whatever they want to call themselves. Too much negativity. I'm not an influencer. I am a person who likes to help others succeed. That is who I am. I am a leader, not a follower. And it is a lot harder to be a leader, trust me. And I am also an icon of the F4L. So, with that, this week I'm going to be bringing you guys those movie reviews and the television reviews I promised you. To all of the people I mentioned tonight and all of them people around everywhere who are doing absolute amazing things. Angela Russell, Miss Lana King, um, the Super Duck Grayson Russell, Noah the Nightmare Tyndall, Leo the Bull Curtis, Ivan the Dolphin Shark, Yesenia Berkovitz. Uh, the Menya Boys, the Adele Boys, Jaden Brooks, Jojo the Bodybuilder, Philip Ricardo Jr., and countless more. To new people, like I mentioned, Jax, Eli, Wyatt, you guys are killing it. You guys are doing great. Keep up on the work. Don't let the haters get to you, and may all your dreams come true, everyone, wherever you are. May all your dreams come true. Peace from the F4 headquarters.